Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Zhong. Today I'm going to share with you how to create an abstract typography in Blender 3D 3.0 Alpha version using geometry nodes. This artwork is actually inspired by this artist right here on Behance. He made this really cool 3D typography design using Cinema 4D. And I saw it and I thought it was really cool. So I have figured out how to recreate this in Blender 3D using geometry nodes. So before we dive into Blender, let me go through what we are going to do in this tutorial. First, we are going to draw the curve. And then we are going to build the basic shape on the curve using geometry nodes and then add more details onto it. Then next we are going to add lighting, material and set up the camera to finish the scene. So without further ado, let's get started. First, select all and delete everything and then press shift A and add a plane. Press tab to go into edit mode and then press ctrl R to add two loop cut. Then select the vertices at the center and then press ctrl I to invert select and delete all selected vertices. And then press numpad 3 to see the right view and we can start drawing our curve. Press E and hold control to extrude it. And then press numpad 7 to see the top view. Press A to select all and then press shift D to duplicate it. Select two of the vertices here and press F to connect it. Then select these vertices and press numpad 7 to see the top view and press G to move it besides. Then select 4 of these vertices, press numpad 3 to see the right view, and then press shift D followed by G to duplicate it. Then select these vertices, press numpad 3 and move it higher. Then select these vertices, press numpad 7 to see the top view, and then press E followed by X to extrude it. Then select these vertices and press E and followed by X and extrude it to left. Then select these vertices, press numpad 3 to see the right view and then press E followed by G to extrude it. Okay, and then now I want to make it rounded edge. So press A to select all, then press Shift Ctrl B to bevel it. Then change the segment to 32. Maybe we can make the width bigger. Okay, this is fine for me. And then press tab to exit the edit mode. Then right click and convert it to curve. Then press G followed by Y and move it beside. And then we rename this character curve. And then next, we want to add the mesh onto the curve by using geometry node. Okay, so to do it, press shift A and add a cube. Then rename it character. Then split the screen and go to Geometry Node Editor, press New to apply Geometry Node to the cube, then pin it, and then drag the curve we draw just now into the Geometry Node Editor, then connect it to the group output, and then press Shift A and add a curve to Mesh Node. Put it one line so we are easy to see. And then press Shift A again, go to Curve Primitive and add a curve circle. Then connect it to the profile curve, change the radius to 0.04, so that means we are taking our character curve object info and fit it to the curve to mesh node to generate the mesh. But in order to generate the mesh, we need to add another curve object and fit it to the profile curve. So the curve circle is one of the pre-made curve object in geometry node. If you want to have a custom shape, you can also draw it yourself in the 3D viewport and connect it to the curve profile here. And then next, I want to add a semi-circle mesh to the curve. So in order to do it in the 3D viewport, press Shift A and add a circle. Press tab to go into edit mode, then press numpad 7 to see the top view, then delete half of the circle, delete the vertices. Then press tab again to exit the edit mode, then right click and convert it to curve. Then press G followed by Y and move it beside, rename it semi circle. So in the geometry node editor, select the curve to mesh node and the object info, then press shift D to duplicate it, and then we need to add a joint geometry. Put it before the group output, then connect our curve to mesh node to join geometry. And then drag our semicircle into the geometry node editor. Then connect it to the profile curve. And currently the semicircle is too big and we need to make it smaller. So to do it, press shift A, go to geometry and add a transform node. Change the scale of XYZ to 0.24 maybe. And then next, we need to add some thickness to our mesh. So in order to do it, select our character, go to the modifier properties and add a solidify modifier. Then change the thickness to 0.08. And then currently, by default, our geometry is actually displayed as shade smooth. 
and this is why the edge of the geometry is lot rounded and this is not what I want. I actually want it to have sharp edges. So to solve this issue, we can add a beaver modifier. Then maybe we can change the segment to 2. And now we have the sharp edges. And next, I want to trim the mesh of the semicircle shorter. I only want it to cover some of the parts I want. So to do it, in the geometry node editor, press shift A and add a curve trim node. This one, add it after the object info, but before the curve to mesh node. Then change the start value to 0.8 and the end value to 1. And next, we need to add more details onto the basic shape. So to do it, select this node and press shift D to duplicate it. Let's move the join geometry and group output lower. And then connect it to the join geometry. And then in the curve trim node, change the start value to 0.28 and the end value to 0.47 maybe you can play around with this it depends on where you want it to be and then I want this semicircle to facing at the camera so to do it let's go to transform node this one and change the Z rotation to 180 degree and next we are going to add this cylinder to the details so to do it let's duplicate this node again Move the joint geometry and group output lower. Connect the curve to mesh node to joint geometry. Then delete the object info for the semicircle and the transform node. We don't need it anymore. Then press Shift A, go to curve primitive and add a curve circle. Then connect the curve to the profile curve. Then change the radius to 0.1. Then in the curve trim node, trim the start value to 0.52 and the end value to 0.65. And then Duplicate this node again, move this lower, connect it to joint geometry, in the curve trim node, change the start to 0 and change the end value to 0 0.07. And then again, select this node, press Shift D to duplicate it, move this lower, connect it to joint geometry, and then change the radius to 0.2 maybe and in the curve trim node change the start value to 0.5 and the end value to 0.7 and next we can start to add material onto it so before we add the material let's add a basic light and set up the camera first so go to render properties tab change the render engine to cycles and change the device to gpu compute and then switch the viewport shading to render preview then press shift a and add a area light and then press G and follow by G and move it higher. Then press S to make it bigger. The bigger we scale, the softer shadow we will get. And then go to the light properties tab and change the power to 200. And then press Shift A and add a camera. And then hold Control Alternate 0 to set current view as camera. Then go to camera properties tab and change the focal length to 120mm. So it will look like an isometric view. And then press Shift T and start to adjust the angle you like. Let's move all this 3D element beside, so we won't see it inside the camera. And now we can start to add material to the character. So to do it, press Shift A and add a cube. Press G and follow by Y and move it beside. Rename it Material Cube. Then go to Material Properties tab and press New to add a new material. And I'm going to add all the material I need on this cube. And later I will execute it in the Geometry Node Editor. So if we refer to the sample, we need to add total 4 material to the character, which is black color, white color, glass, and metallic green. So let's press the plus button to add 4 material. Press New to apply the material. Then rename it Black, White, Metallic Green and glass so for the black color we change the base color to black so for the white color change the base color to white for the metallic green let's simply put the green color first we are going to tweak it later so for the glass we change the surface to glass then go back into the geometry node editor let's move two of this node beside so we have more space then let's zoom into our first part of node the node for our basic shape and then press Shift A, go to Material, and add a Material Assign node. Add it after the Curve to Mesh node. Then in the Material column, we can select the material we want. So here for the basic shape, I'm going to choose Metallic Green. 
and then select the material assign node, press shift D to duplicate it and put it after the curve to mesh node for the semicircle as well. And then for this one, we are going to select white color and then duplicate the material assign node again, put it after the curve to mesh node for another semicircle. And then for this, we select white color as well, then duplicate it again, put it after the curve to mesh node for the cylinder. Then for this one, we choose black color. Then duplicate again, put it after the curve to mesh node for another cylinder. And then for this one, we remain it black color. Duplicate again and put after the curve to mesh node for another cylinder. Then for this one, we want to choose grass. Okay, now we have assigned all the material onto the character and we can start to tweak it. So select the material cube, go to the material properties tab, select the black color and change the roughness to zero maybe. Select the metallic green, then change the base color to a lighter green color. Maybe somewhere here. And then change the metallic to 1 and the roughness to 0.3 maybe. You can experiment with other value as well to get a different result. And then for the glass, change the roughness to 0 and the IOR to 1.1. So it will lower the refraction. You can also play around with this value to get a different result. Then I think I'm going to tweak the light a little bit and add a few more lighting to make it look nicer. So first, I want to make the refraction line on the surface more obvious. So let's grab this lighting and press S followed by Y to make it wider. Then change the power to 2000. Then currently the front side is a little bit too dark. So let's press Shift D and follow by X to duplicate the lighting. And then press R follow by Y and tap 90 degree to rotate it. Then press G followed by G to move it lower. Then we can change the power to 200 maybe. It don't have to be so bright. And then next, I want to add a soft lighting at the back so that it will highlight the edge of the object. Okay, so let's duplicate this lighting and move it to the back. Then press R followed by G and tap 180. And then press S followed by G to make it bigger. Change the power to 4000. Then go to the World Properties tab and change the color to black color. And last, we can start to add the floor. So press Shift A and add a plane. Press S to make it bigger until it cover the entire scene. Then press G followed by G to move it lower. Then maybe we can select our lighting and then press G followed by X and move it backward. And then go to the material properties tab, press new to add a new material, change the base color to black color. Then currently the reflection seem a little bit weird. So to fix this issue, let's select our character, go to the modifier properties and add a subdivision surface. Then we almost finish it. Let's go to render properties. I think we can move the lighting at the back to the right a little bit. Then we almost finish it. Let's go to the render properties tab. Set the sampling to final. Expand the denoising and active the render and LM and then set the light path to full global illumination. Expand it and untick the refractive and refractive caustic. Then go to render and render the image. And then we done it. So if you like my video, please subscribe and see you next week. Bye.